to a very very interesting session from the verbal guru Sajil sir. Today I'm going to talk about something else. I've been talking to you about words. I've been talking to you about idioms, phrases, etc., etc. But after all, what are you going to do with these words? You're going to make them into lovely sentences. And if that sentence is grammatically incorrect, then there's going to be every effort of mine is going to get wasted. So let's talk about certain very very interesting things about grammar. Listen to me, one thing. There are hundred and one sides on grammar. But the biggest problem is that grammar tells you only about rules, rules, and rules, and we just can't memorize rules. So the but is the best way to understand whether I am speaking correctly, whether I am writing correctly. What's the best way? The only way to do that is learn from mistakes. That's been the only way that we say, na? We don't learn from theory. We actually learn from mistakes. And so today, I'm going to present to you grammar in a very, very different and an extremely refreshing way. So let's start with the first thing about the first sentence over here. I made a collection of these typical bloopers. That is, these mistakes which people make. My first sentence says, "I have downloaded several softwares on my PC." Commonly heard and commonly said. Now, what's the error in this sentence? Think. The error is on this word softwares. It cannot be softwares. It is software, not softwares, because software is a collective noun. Plurals can only be made of countable nouns. Collective nouns do not have plurals. So next time. Don't make a mistake by saying "give me different softwares." Say "give me different types of software." That will the most important. Similar to this is when you're looking at this word called furniture. You cannot say "I have bought furnitures from this shop." You'll say "I've bought different items of furniture from this shop." Or, for example, you cannot say "there are many sheep who are grazing." You'll say "there are many sheep who are grazing." Just remember, she furniture software—they all are called collective nouns. Be careful about that. My second question on grammatist: When I ask somebody that, "Hi, introduce yourself," what does she say? She tells me, "Myself, Radhika Tiwari." This is one of the most commonest errors I've seen. Believe me or not, people don't even understand that. You will ask me, "What's wrong?" The first thing we begin to understand is what is myself. Myself is used in a different way. For example, it's a reflexive pronoun. So what do we say? I did this myself. That is myself. Or if you want to use the subject, then you say I myself did this, which means it's a confirmation that nobody else did this. Got it? So that is reflexive, and the second one, when I say I myself did this, you are emphasizing. Let's say you tell somebody I did this, and the other person does not believe it, and says really, and then you say I myself did this. Got it? Now coming back to my original sentence, and Radhika Tiwari tells me myself Radhika Tiwari. So now you realize that it's totally incorrect. So what should you say? You would simply say my name is Radhika Tiwari. Oh, if you are a little egoist, you can say. I am Radhika, Radhika Tiwari. Sentence. Now this is, believe me, one of the most confusing pairs. Where to use who and where to use whom, and there are so many things written on this. So I thought the best way is to simplify the entire process and make it easy for you. So how do I do that? Please follow, and here we go. Who and whom. Remember. Who is used as a subject? That means when I am talking in a subject manner, then I'll use who. But when I am talking in an object manner, then I will use whom. So I've written who, subject, whom, object. You're still confused, so I'll make it easier for you. So remember, who is normally used as a questioner, correct? Who and whom is a question sentence or in an interrogative sentence. So the best way is to think what could be the answer to my question, and that will answer it. See the easy method. 
Here we go. If the answer for the question is starting with he, she or they, then it is who. Got it? He did this. So the question will be who did this? She did this. Who did this? They did that. Who did this? So easy. If the answer statement is him, her, them, then we who? Do you realize? When the answer is in the object case, then the question will also be in the who and then the or in the who. Now let's take a little example to make it very clear to you. If I am saying, for whom is this coffee? For whom is this coffee? Then the answer is, it's for him. Do you realize that? Him is coming at the end. Therefore, it's in the object. The answer was him. So easy. For whom? Next time when you get this question in an examination or when you are talking, think of the answer and you will be always right and who and who. Fourth sentence in the round called grammatist. The sentence is a very common sentence and a very common error. And especially I've seen this error in the emails that I get. It's a typical email grammatical error. You would not understand how many mistakes people make when they write on the email. Here is one common sentence. Let's look at this. Please revert when you have an update on the contract. The word is revert which is a problem. It seems please revert. Revert. See the man in action? Please revert. That's what they think. Actually, they've got the entire meaning of revert incorrect. Because revert actually means to regress. To push back. Revert means to turn back. He reverted on his proposal. Which basically means he turned back. So definitely this is incorrect usage of the word. And when we are doing grammar, we talk about usage. And this is a usage error. So what should I say? Very simple. I will say, please reply. Don't say revert next time. Say reply. I hope you've learned something very useful in this question. You will not be making this mistake which everybody else is making. Fifth question. This question is one of those very, very common bloopers. Well, let's look at the first sentence. I have less money today than I had yesterday. So what would you say? You would normally say, I have, since there is a than, so therefore there is a comparison. So you would say, I have lesser money than I had yesterday. Very common. But that is incorrect. And this is correct. You'll ask me, how? Why should I add er to it? That's a mistake you're making. Adjectives have three forms. The degrees, positive, comparative, superlative. The base adjective is little. And so therefore, the comparison of that is less. So if less itself is in the comparative form, then therefore, the question doesn't arise at all. So therefore, less is perfectly correct. Interesting, isn't it? Now, now suppose now, if I have this next sentence which says, I have fewer rupees today. Now you'd say fewer Today, than, where is no than in this? No need. Because here the point is, few is my base adjective, fewer is the comparative adjective. So, so the adjective itself is a comparative, therefore I don't have to do. One very important point to understand between little and few is that little is used for non-countables. Non-countables, little is used for non-countables and few is used for countable. So rupees was countable, but money is a collective noun uncountable, therefore I use less. So I would say I have little milk, I have few eggs, that's what I say. One very interesting factor I'd like to say, suppose if I add a, the article a, before little and I say a little, or if I add a to before few and I have a few, what difference does it make? The difference is very simple. Look at this very important reason. 
When it is, it says that, suppose if you say, now, that if you write and if you say two wonderful adjectives, little and few, and the various degrees in which they can be represented. So let's look at this. We made it very clear that little, that little is positive degree, starting, positive. Less is comparative degree, C. And least is, L-E-A-S-T, -E, is superlative. Similarly, few is for countables. So let's write this one thing, uncountable. Uncountable, uncountable. Few, countable, countable. Please note that, huh? please keep noting these things, very important. Countable, few, fewer, fewer. That's it, simple. We will not use too much of fewest, so we just give it a few and fewer. So let's see an example of how I would do. I would say, I have, I have, Little milk. I have little milk. Somebody comes and says, Mr. Metro, do you have some milk for me? I'll say, I'm so sorry, Mr. Gupta. I have little milk and I can't give it to you. Similarly, Mr. Gupta comes and says, Excuse me, Mr. Metro, do you have two eggs? I'll say, I'm sorry, I have few eggs. I have few eggs. That's what I'd say. Few eggs. Which means near to no. Null set. So I sorry, Mr. Gupta, I can't give you any eggs because I have few eggs. But now see the magic. If I now use the article before that, and if I say I have a little milk, or I have, if I have say I have a few eggs, then that will mean something different. That would mean that I have some few, I have a couple of them and I can give to Mr. Gupta. So I'll say, okay, Mr. Gupta, I have a few eggs and I can give you a couple. Or I have a little milk, so please take a little bit. See the difference between that? So please remember that. And last point, please remember, with the superlative, you will use the definite article. And you will say, the least, the least. Look at this. <laughs> One of my favorite sentences. This is the least I can do for you. This is the least I can, you have done so much for me. This is the least I can do for you. I hope after this question, you are absolutely clear about when to use little and few, when to use a little and a few, when to use less, when to use least, and when to use fewer. My sixth question in The Grammatist. I hope you're feeling good. Let's look at the sentence. This is one sentence which people keep on speaking and don't even realize the implications of what they're saying. So let's say, according to Kashish. So first of all, I say, according to Kashish. Then, or if I say, as per Kashish, what do I mean? I'm referring to a third person, a third person, third person's opinion. It's, it's not my opinion. According to Kashish, or as per Kashish, then the Kashish is a third person and I am not Kashish. But if Kashish speaks and says, as per me, then there is a problem. Or Kashish says, according to me, this is a mistake. Kashish says, according to me. So if Kashish says, now according to me, then that is implying that Kashish is an expert about what she is saying, which she may not be. I repeat, when I say, when you say, if Kashish speaks and says, according to me, or if Kashish comes and says, as per me, then it is implying that Kashish is an authority on this subject, which might or might not be true. Therefore, what should Kashish say? 
Kashish should simply say, so Kashish will not say according to me, but Kashish will say very simply one simple thing. Kashish will say, I think that. Kashish will say, I think that. That is there. And or Kashish will say, in my opinion, in my opinion, these are two statements that she will be making in my opinion and that will happen right over here. Correct? That's it. But remember one little thing before I finish on this statement. If Kashish says, as per Kashish and Kashish is speaking, that is called rhetorical. This is beautiful. That is called rhetorical. Rhetorical is grammatical. That is rhetorical. That is grammatical. And then you would say, Kashish says in a dramatic way, as per Kashish, this is there. That is royal drama as we talk about. My seventh question on the grammatist. And this question typically talks about one type of error and that error is called vernacular. V-E-R-N-A-C-U-L-A-R. Now what do I mean by vernacular error? Vernacular error means errors which come from translation. If I'm a Hindi speaking character or if I'm a Bengali speaking character, I will tend to translate. For example, if I let me take a very simple sentence and show it to you that I am going to meet with you. With you. Look at this. I'm going to meet with you. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? When you say I'm going to meet with you. Now let's look at this. Where does the error come from? For example, if you say, Main aapke saath, aapke saath milne wala hoon. Saath becomes with. Ami apna shonge dakha korbo. So dakha is meet. Shonge becomes with. So that is where the error comes. And the correct sentence is, I'm going to meet you. There is no width in that factor. So this width will be deleted. Don't make that mistake. Got it now? Now let me tell you the sentence which I've written. And here is one more vernacular error. It says, students must cope up with exam stress. Cope up with. Incorrect. This is, cope is a verb. Up itself, hope, hope is the verb. This itself includes up. Therefore, we don't say cope up. We will say students must cope with. That is the correction. So the correct sentence would be students must cope with. I'm going to come up with a lot of vernacular bloopers for you. This is cut and students must cope with you. Thank you. Thank you.